Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Mach-E Vlog. And today we're going to try out plug and charge on three different networks and see what the pros and cons are of each. So let's go. So the three networks we're going to try it out on are the Tesla Supercharger Network, Electrify America, and EVgo. Now technically, that's where we're at right now. Technically, EVgo doesn't do plug and charge. It does something called Auto Charge Plus. But for all intents and purposes for the end user you, it's the same. Uh, the, the difference is, is the communication protocols that they're using and how you have to set it up and everything. Uh, we've had Auto Charge Plus uh, that we've used with EVgo before. It seems quick and easy. So this is going to be the first one. We're going to go ahead and talk about that. And I'm going to go try it out. So here we are. This is EVgo. Uh, as I said, they do Auto Charge Plus. For you, it's basically not much difference once you have it set up. The, the difference is, is like this uses the MAC address of the car to verify um, with plug and charge is using um, ISO 15.11.8, I believe is the, the standard, uh, but it's using certificates that are on the car. Slight difference, but it doesn't really matter. To set it up, it is a bit different because you have to go to EVgo, you go into the menu, and then you uh, set up auto charge for your vehicle. And the way it works is like you start the process, then you have to plug the car in, it verifies that's the car that you're doing uh, the auto charge plus with and then you disconnect, and then the next time from then on out, then your Auto Charge Plus is going to, to work. So then once it's set up, it just functions just like plug and charge with, with no issues whatsoever. So that's what we're gonna do now. I got my timer. What we're gonna do is simply just plug in, and it's going to, from the time I hit click, plugging in to the time uh, it says charging on the screen, that's going to be my official time. So we're going to go ahead and hit click and I'm going to hit start. So it started and then now I got to hop over here. It's connecting. Uh, payment has been authorized. And let's see, it's checking cable safety. Sorry for that. matching voltage still hasn't initiated the charge yet we're waiting just a few more seconds uh and then there it just started that was 33 seconds so not bad for uh initialization process and now we are actually charging um one thing to note a lot of ea stations they have the old ones to have uh, dual ports and you can only use one side at a time these EV go stations, as you can see here, we're using one side and somebody just pulled up and they're gonna use the other side. So uh, the Auto Charge Plus is uh, 33 seconds. We can move on to uh, Electrify America or Tesla Supercharger next and then see which one of those is quick. Now we're at Electrify America, this little station here. I think we're in Vista, California, uh, Vista Oceanside. But there's four stalls. They're all open right now. It says that uh, plug in right away. Now to set up uh, plug and charge with Electrify America, it's within your Ford.com account and uh, Ford Pass. Uh, once you have plug and charge enabled, you should be able to do the plug and charge with no problem. Uh, if you do run into issues, because I, I had this recently, like I updated my credit card, but I forgot to update uh, the credit card info in Ford Pass, so my payments were, were failing. We're gonna go ahead and just give it a try. I think I have everything working now. Um, it says plug in first. Oh, I gotta get my timer ready. Let's see. Now, one of the things about uh, EA is that it seems to be that it varies on how quick it will do uh, the initialization process. Um, we're not gonna drive around and try to get like a good time or a bad time. This is like literally the first time um, we are trying this. So I wanna get ready. It says it's ready to plug in. I'll get right here. I wanna hit start, plugged in. Actually, I did that the, the reverse way. So we'll deduct a second on theirs this time. Connecting the vehicle, this may take a minute. Um, and of course with EVgo and Electrify America, there are different brands uh, that are behind the actual charging. Um, 
So it could be like differences in that. Payment authorized, so the plug-in charge worked. Initiating charge. Um, they have newer st stations that have only one cable. And this is what I was talking about. With Electrify America, only one of these can be active at, at the same time. So if somebody pulled in over there, um, they would have to use that station. They couldn't use this cable. On EVgo, you can use both. So it's, uh, thank you for choosing Electrify America. And it may actually be doing some charging. And there it goes, right there. So we'll hit stop. Uh, I think I missed it by a couple of seconds, but we'll just say that was 56 seconds. Um, not as bad as I thought it might be. Um, this is, we, we've seen some very long times. That seems to be, I don't know, what do you think, Liv? I think that was about what we'd expect. I'd say around about two, yeah. Uh, under a minute. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like I could go ahead and just hit stop right right now, but I'm sort of curious to see like what it's going to charge up to. We haven't preconditioned anything. We're right by our house, uh, but it's at 92 kilowatts right now. I didn't even check or care about the the EV Go, um, but as you can see, that that isn't a, a horribly long time. It's you know uh, about just under a minute uh, it, when it works. Now, one of the other issues that we've had with with EA is that sometimes it doesn't always work. The the station might do something weird or it doesn't ramp up to full speed. I haven't had that problem with EVgo, but we've had times where we plug in, everything sounds like it's working great, and then it will only uh, go up to like 34 kilowatts because something is derated within the, the, the station itself. This is at 84 kilowatts, which seems uh, a bit slow. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, we haven't been here to this one. I don't have any experience with this one. It should be probably about 120, because this is 150, kilowatt station we usually get like 124 out of these but um i'm gonna go ahead we got two percent uh charge we're gonna go ahead and stop we can charge it home for free i don't want to pay here it's uh 48 cents for this one i didn't even check ev go uh but we'll we'll do a summary and i'll look at all the prices that we went through today but uh so what did i say with this one 56 seconds or so and yeah, the other was about. like uh, 33 I have to double check now. <laughs> yes, it was 33. This was 56 or 55. And anecdotally, this is the Electrify America that we used to charge the leaf at, the, or used to have to charge the leaf at uh, back when we didn't have the home charging ability. Because they still have Chatamo over there. Yeah, they do. It's a small so, uh, station. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and hit stop. And then we can move on and try to find a supercharger that we can use. Let's go. And now we are a Tesla. Yes, we can plug and charge a Tesla. You can too, uh, if you have the adapter. We were lucky enough to get this one early, but if you have a Ford EV, you can also get the adapter for free. We'll have details down below, but other automakers are, of course, gonna be doing that. Now there's a helicopter, there's traffic. It's okay, we're gonna do this quickly. Patrick has been doing this um, the whole time, so now I'm gonna do it too. We have a lot of videos detailing how you attach it and take it off, but that's a simple method, and I'm going to push this in and as soon as I push it in I hit start on the clock and uh, nope there we go click. start there you it go. clicked and uh, with the adapter it's a little harder to do one-handed it seems like one-handed will come when we don't have to use an adapter when Nax is baked in and but I'm checking in the app he's checking in the app and we have the blue ring and as soon as it starts flashing it'll indicate it's flashing it'll indicate that it started charging but is it charging in Ford Pass which is what Patrick Not is yet. looking at not it's yet. There, it's fast All charging right. now. And that is 25 seconds. Woo, fastest so far. Yeah, and it's like, and that was based off of me hitting refresh, um, but I think it might have been in just a couple of seconds faster. We, we've been sort of judging it by when that starts uh, flashing blue, but that's not exactly right, but it's, it's basically within 20 to 25 seconds. That was pretty awesome, I like that a lot. So you have an adapter, but you have it faster too. All right, now we're gonna go and tell you some nitty gritty details. By the way, if you can't tell by the traffic behind me, it's rush hour, so this is a busy charging station. It's a busy street. Of course, there are motorbikes coming by, um, but we wanted to be really considerate of all the people that are here charging. So we are not even in a technical charging spot right now. We are on the other side of it because of the placement of our charge port. Patrick was a good neighbor, and there was someone actually charging right here, and we waited for them to finish so that we could uh, we could park without inconveniencing anyone. Although, of course, no one can park here and use that charger. 
Right. So the, so the thing is, is like a Tesla couldn't park here and use that charger, but they couldn't anyways if there was a Tesla. Um, so the idea is like I'm using this uh, stall, but that's the only one that's blocked off and not using. If I would have parked in this spot here, uh, that one wouldn't be able to be used and the one on the left wouldn't be able to be used. So, and then the other thing that we're gonna say is like, if you have a Mach-E or a Lightning, come join us, park right next to us because I would use that one and you would use the one on the left. We're not taking up any, any extra uh, charging stalls. So trying to be good neighbors because it's just the right thing to do, no matter you know who, what, what EV we're talking about. We're just trying to be good neighbors to our other EV drivers. And so the easy way to think about it, if you have a mach -E in this situation, uh, is to park to the right. Just park aim to for the right. the right. That's all. And if you see another one, be a good neighbor. Park next park to him. Park next to him. All right, let's go. So those are our three plug-in chargers done. If you are interested, uh, the Tesla um, charging, the, the prices of the charging varies throughout the day based on busyness and demand. Um, at this current time, it's 59 cents per kilowatt hour, and that's the non-member rate. You can get a membership for $12.99, and then um, it varies from eight to 15 cent discount. Uh, and, and, you, and their sites vary by location. So there's one that's like three miles away that's 50 cents per kilowatt hour right now. So uh, EA is starting to change their pricing per location. EVgo varies per location as well. And I think they do some time of day stuff. And uh, EA, of course, has a membership option to discount it. Does EVgo? And EVgo as EVgo well. EVgo does. Yeah, everybody so wants you to have a membership. We need like an overarching membership or something. And we'll do a separate video going into all that because the pricing structure of all the stuff is quite complicated. Yeah, if you guys give this a thumbs up, um, we will do a deep dive into pricing considerations for multiple chargers. And we won't just focus on like right near our house, we'll try to hit some various uh, hot spots throughout the country and do like a comparison, at least like, you know, Northeast, Southeast, uh, Midwest. Whole bunch, a yeah. lot of things, yeah. Um, but uh, otherwise, so that's, that's it about pricing. As far as the, like how quick it was to do auto charge plus or plug and charge or plug and charge, um, really overall, it's not that huge of a difference. I mean, it was 20 seconds, 33 seconds, and 55 seconds. It was so 25 seconds. 25, but I think we had, we that may have been just a refresh, but even 25, you know, that's not that big of a deal. And, oh, and if we count in putting on the adapter, that's like three seconds. The adapter oh, that's true is quite too. easy. Yeah, so like three, so we say 28 seconds. So, um, but I did have to get it out. Yeah, <laughs> 30 seconds, so, that's still the fastest. My, my main thing is, is like, yeah. if you're trying to do like a quick 10 minute charge, that's, something but if we're doing like a like 35 minute charge or even more 45 minutes or something like that it really doesn't make that big of a difference uh how fast each of them works i i was just curious to see um all of that is way better than like having to use an app or tap or doing whatever i much prefer just plugging in it's so much nicer we've been doing it with uh electrify america since we had the car we uh, had auto, auto charge plus for, uh, I believe about a year now. We just never use EVgo. We hardly ever use Electrify America because we charge at home. But on road trips, um, this is where, you know, it's sort of nice that you can turn on these memberships monthly because it's like we could leave it off. And then if we go on a road trip, turn it on for that month if we're going to be charging a lot. Yeah, and, and turning it on depending on which um, charging company, yeah, which network you're going to be using. Which it also makes me think, too, is like as we're planning uh, road trips, if I sign up for the discounted uh, EVgo or discounted Tesla Supercharger for that month, then will I want to just focus on them and maybe not do Electrify America versus, you know, this is the cheapness <laughs> in me coming out. <laughs> And now, of course, uh, so interesting things we learned that once the ring starts spinning on your, um, what do you call it, charging icon, charging? Charge port uh, indicator. Indicator. Char so, that sounds right. I know there's right. A, probably a better technical. <laughs> Tell us if you know. Charge port indicator, that it's actually a couple seconds after that that it starts charging. But uh, it, I think it's interesting that Tesla's the one without the screen. So um, there's like... Hold on, we got to pause. Well, we had to pause for a second because there was literally somebody with some very, very loud music, even though they were on the street in front of us. So sorry for that. 
as you were saying. Uh, but spoiler, I, some people have asked for blooper reels. We get a lot of bloopers that we just delete because they're terrible. But uh, that might be the start of us intentionally gathering a blooper reel because there's a lot of that. Earlier, there were dogs and crows or whatever. But okay. Um, the thing that we learned about Tesla, if I told you this already, I can't remember when that loud music was happening, is that when you plug in the Tesla adapter, you see the solid blue lights on the charge port charging indicator. What did you call it? Yeah, that works. Something like that. Um, when it starts flashing, it doesn't indicate that it's charging in Ford Pass, so it's a couple seconds after that. And, and, you and Ford Pass could be delayed because it's, it's literally Certainly. getting the data from the cloud. So it may be charging, um, and, but then like on uh, EVgo and Electrify America, their stations can lag on their screen even. So, Yeah. Um, this video might be interesting in the future if we see any issues plugging into Electrify America or EVgo and initializing plug and charge. Uh, as we gain more experience with Tesla, we'll see if there are any bugs or issues because of course, if you plugged in at Electrify America, you might have experienced some issues. So we know it's not seamless. Obviously though, all this was pretty seamless. It worked as Great. intended. Nice and easy. I think this yeah. is the future of um, you know DC fast charging is being able to just plug in. Uh, hopefully, more uh, chargers support this. It's just so nice and easy to 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 deal with. And uh, I think we should wrap this up. We just want to remind everybody we are one of the first that have the Tesla supercharger, but you can get it. Uh, you need to go to the link that's going to be in the description, and you can order a Tesla adapter uh, from Ford. One per vehicle. So if you, if have, you have a Ford EV. It, yeah. <laughs> if you have a Ford EV, we don't know what Chevy or GM or anybody like that is going to be doing. We've uh, heard Chevy that Rivian is announcing soon. Rivian soon. Exciting. Um, so just, just, you know, watch all of our other videos. We've done uh, a road trip already. We've done uh, some other charging tests and different ways of activating a supercharger because you can do other ways of activating the uh, Tesla supercharger. So anyways, I think that's it. And by the way, uh, in our video where we show other ways to activate a Tesla supercharger, uh, plug and charge is a way that you can activate it without providing your credit card details to Tesla. If that's something that is a concern for you, which we have heard from some people. We, we got a couple of comments. It's like, I yeah. want to use plug and charge or Ford Pass because I don't want Tesla to have my credit card. So if, uh, if that's a concern for you, you have this option. Uh, but like Patrick said, details down below where you can get your free um, next to CCS charging adapter from Ford. If you have a Ford EV, uh, we will have, uh, or we have, don't know when this is going to go out, uh, a video with a third party adapter. So uh, there are options coming out for other people if you are so inclined. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video in which we tried out plug and charge. And what's the EVgo one? Auto charge plus. plus. <laughs> plug and charge just rolls up the, uh, rolls up the tongue. Um, we tried out three of them and we had a great time doing it. It was very successful. Huge thank you to and our costly. patrons. costly. <laughs> and costly. Yeah, what were we... in at the peak times. Well, but... we finished work and then we went and did it at five o'clock, so... <laughs> but we didn't charge much, so it's all good. We didn't charge so much. So thank you to who? Our patrons, whose names are scrolling across the screen right now. We appreciate you guys so very much. Uh, you, they totally covering your face. They're gone. They're gone. You're fine. Thank you to you, the viewer. We appreciate you for liking and subscribing and sharing, whatever. Uh, thank you to our YouTube members who get sweet things like little pony emojis and what else? GT, uh, GT emoji mm -hmm. GT bad. and member videos and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and on that note, just remember that whatever you drive, whether you can plug and charge it or not, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye.